welcome. Welcome to another video of the abdominal viscera spotting. Here in front of me, I have a specimen of the abdominal viscera. You can see the stomach, small intestine, the pancreas. And the structure on the far left, darkish in color, is the spleen. Now the spleen that I'm holding, its proper orientation is like so. If I were to basically take my fingers and put them against the notched border, facing this apex towards the front. This is how it appears like in my abdomen, on the left side. The spleen has a superior border right here. You can see how it has a nice serrated margin, a notched margin. This is the notched border. Here we have the anterior pole. Here we have the posterior pole. And this all is the visceral surface. On the outside, we have the costal surface. This was the one that faces our ribs. So in such a position, you can see how the spleen is meeting multiple structures. You can see how it meets the stomach superiorly. If I were to show it to you like this, this impression right here on the back side is for the kidney. This impression is for the stomach and this impression is for the colon. So really it appears like so. It's really tightly, closely opposed. And the kidney would be right on the back side. You can see how they are such in close proximity to each other. And obviously it's a bit uh, not in perfect position, but this is how it looks like in approximation to each other. Having said that, what other things can we appreciate in the spleen? You can notice there's a bit of a ligament attached to a spleen. The spleen is all entirely covered with peritoneum. This one I'm holding is that per same peritoneum. Here in the center is the hilum. The hilum, you can see the opening of certain vessels. Here we have a splenic artery, right over here. This is the same artery I showed last time, which is passing over the pancreas. In fact, here I'll show it on the pancreas as well, once again. Here is the same artery. And here, look, you can see that same artery will ultimately enter into this artery right here, the splenic artery, and finally into the spleen. And right beside that, we have the splenic vein. Always remember, the larger ones are always the veins. Larger, with less musculature, more collapse, that's the vein. The other one, right beside, the smaller one is the splenic artery. And the spleen, aside from that, size-wise, normally this is how the normal size is. But in some specimens, you may notice they're quite large. Those are pathological. A spleen function is normally to process the dead blood cells. When there's a hemolysis of the red blood cells, it forms a graveyard for those cells. And sometimes when there's a hemolytic anemia, these spleens can grow quite large. In fact, patients with thalassemia, their spleens can go even larger than my fist even. So this is a quite useful organ actually. And, uh, but there's not much else as far as spotting is concerned for the spleen. And that is why alongside the spleen, we are going to also look at the kidney. The kidney, as I said, which is located on the posterior wall, right behind all these structures. This is your kidney and this is your left side. How do I know it's the left side kidney? The rule is, for a specimen obviously, the anterior side will always be protruding. You see from the front, notice how the left side, the front side is bulging, while the back side is really flat. Otherwise, the rule is, in the hilum, just like the spleen had a hilum, the kidney also has a hilum and here you can see a renal vein right in the front. The vein will always be in the front and this can help you orient its position. Artery will always be on the back side right over here. So I know that this is the front and this is the back side. This thing suspending down below is the ureter. Let's pass a white pin through this ureter right over here. The urine which is formed in the kidneys will then pass through the pelvis and finally into the ureters. It will ascend, descend downwards into the bladder. So we can see all the structures in the hilum, renal vein, renal artery and the ureter. The kidney has a superior pole. This is where you have the adrenal glands. It has an inferior pole and uh, it has a lateral border right here and the medial border is obviously the hilum. The kidneys are not completely covered with peritoneum. The peritoneum only covers the front side. The back side is completely devoid because it's right against the wall. 
So these were the two structures. Kidneys, as I said, uh, kidneys were also, this is the normal size of the kidney. And the infants are a little smaller, but they grow. Any larger than this, then that would usually be pathological. It happens in cases such as hydronephrosis, where you have a blocked a ureter. Just like any sort of duct can be blocked with a stone, a stone can also block the ureter. And this would be known as urolithiasis. So this would then cause accumulation of urine and that would cause the bulging of the left kidney. So here was the spleen and here was the kidney. And with that, we have covered the majority of the abdominal viscera. Thank you once again for joining us. Allah Hafiz.